Welcome back to Battlelore Second Edition Razor Wings. We're playing the scenario that comes with the neutral unit expansion, and that is called a shot in the dark. Uh, so a few sort of uh, correction things and scenario specific things. Uh, nothing too gravely out of control yet, uh, but I will uh, first fix up one of the attacks and retreats that we did in the first episode. Uh, basically. Uh, we had our archer unit way at the back here shooting at these berserker units uh, in this hex. Now, the way line of sight works in the game is you go from the center of one hex to the center of another hex. And how retreating works is whichever facing of the hex is being hit from the center to center uh, is where the unit will retreat to. Now, I did it incorrectly because... If we look at the archer unit back here, the center of that archer unit hex to the center of where the berserkers were passes through this facing here, not this one. So these berserker units should have retreated this way and not this way. Now, replaying the tape, of course, there were three uh, berserker units left in the square when they had a double retreat. And so they're going to retreat two spaces back here. So there's still going to be three berserker units here in this space uh, and that means that the second archer units here that were firing at these guys because they were here uh, have no effect because these guys had already retreated so that's going to correct the um, the retreating step now there's one other thing that i want to talk about that i kind of glazed over and didn't do well it's not an error but i just want to clarify when things happen so because we have a day night cycle in the game uh, basically, when it's the Decon player's turn, it's day. But the day-night switching happens at the upkeep phase, at the victory point step, which is before you draw your command card and before you do your lore step. So what's happened, basically, uh, is it became nighttime at the end of the Decon, the Decon attack step. So it will become night. So it's night now. Just want to clarify that because it doesn't turn into night at the beginning of the Uthic phase. It turns into the night time during the victory point step of the Dakon phase. Likewise, it's going to turn into daytime on the victory point step of the Uthic phase. And that's going to have, of course, uh, some issues with uh, how the Razor Wings activate and what happens with the specific scenario, specific things. Uh, for instance, Razor Wings go back to their lair uh, at the beginning of the day step. Uh, just want to read that again here. Additionally, uh, when it becomes day, the razor wing unit is removed from the game board. So again, just a timing thing. All right, with all that hot air expelled, let's readjust the camera here. It is now the uh, Uthix turn, and we're going to start with the command step. So they're going to have to play a command card. Okay, so continuing on, so doing things slightly out of uh, order last time, but when it was the Dakon victory point step, it becomes night. And it says when it is night time, uh, when it becomes night, the Uthic player places a friendly Razor Wings unit uh, on the cavern hex at full health. So that's what we should have done last episode. But it didn't affect the game at all, but that just, again, for timing purposes, these guys will come out during the Dakon victory point upkeep step because it turns into night. All right, carrying on, uh, the Uthics are going to play their command card, and they are playing attack left, which means they can order three units on the left side of the board. Now, of course, I've turned the board around because it's the Uthic player's turn, so we're looking from the Uthic player perspective. So they're going to be able to play or activate three units from the left. And yes, they control the Razor Wings as well. So, uh, again, using little mini dice, we're going to activate three units. Well, we're going to activate the Razor Wings because they're just awesome. We're going to activate these grotesques and I think because they move the quickest, well, I don't know. Now let's go ahead and activate the Blood Harvesters up here. So that is now the conclusion of the order step. So we have decided which Uthic units are we are going to order. 
Next up we have the move step. We can move each order unit up to its movement value. Okay, so once again we'll just review the cards here quickly so we know how far or what things can do. So Razor Wings can move three spaces. They're flying so they just ignore all restrictions on uh, any of the tiles. So they can move three spaces. So I'm going to have them move one, two, three. They're going to move here flying. If we can see that, we can just see that. So they're still slightly in camera, right opposite of the guards. And we'll move our die with them because we have not attacked with them yet. Next up we have the grotesque. They're the big bone protruding guys and let's have a look at their card. Uh, and they have a movement value of two. So they're going to be able to move two spaces. Uh, hills don't stop movement. Uh, they just block line of sight. So these guys get to move two. So I'm going to move them one and two to here. And we'll keep the die with them. And lastly we have our blood harvesters. And we can have a quick look at them as well. And the blood harvesters. If we take a quick look at them, if this focuses, have a movement as well of two. So they are going to move two spaces. So uh, we will go one, two, and one, two to here. Now remember it's still nighttime, uh, and nighttime rules mean only adjacent, uh, may, uh, only adjacent act, uh, act, attacks can happen. Now these guys don't have a ranged attack anyway, so it is now the attack phase. So we're going to just remove the die from here and the blood harvesters. They are not adjacent to any of the con units, so they're basically not able to do any attacking. However, we're going to readjust the camera because we do have razor wings up here and they are adjacent to the infantry unit, the Citadel Guards. They are going to be able to attack. So we're going to consult, we're going to rearrange the camera, we're going to consult the razor wings card and then we're going to do the razor wing attack on that guard unit. Okay, so let's hope this is going to focus and not be a pain. Uh, if not, I apologize. Uh, razor Wings, so we have a flying, they're non-flying melee units roll one fewer die during combat rolls against this unit. So if there's a counterattack from the guards against them, they're going to roll one fewer die. This unit ignores combat and movement restriction to hexes. Uh, it moves into or occupies. And it has the claw sweep after advancing. Uh, this unit may stun an enemy adjacent to it. So we'll worry about that if it happens. They get three attack dice. So let's go ahead and roll with three attack dice. They are attacking the Citadel guards. And looking, and of course being the Dakon player, we're looking and we don't really have anything that's going to help us as far as lore cards go. So we can't counter or do anything funky there. And also the Uthic player has no lore. Uh, and they are not playing any lore cards. So we don't know what they have. Maybe they've got some zero lore cards. I don't know. But right now they have no lore tokens. All right, Razor Wing attack, uh, and they are going to be hitting. Uh, they're basically melee, so they're swooping down on the Citadel Guards. So we'll remove their die here because they are attacking. Three attack dice. Well, let's see what they get. They get a whole lot of not much. <laughs> they get two ranged attack hits, which is uh, pretty much useless. They also do not have any... Uh, special ability to go along with the uh, with the, the special ability die because all they have is flying and claw sweep after advancing well they're not advancing so basically what happened here is a whole lot of nothing uh, so razor wings flew out of their uh, out of their place attacked the uh, citadel guards and completely whiffed so the Citadel Guards ducked and, and weaved and did not get attacked. That's it. Now we're into the upkeep up phase. And I just want to reread this again. Because now that it's the start of the upkeep phase, uh, it will become daytime. So that was nighttime. Let me just reread the rules again here. I just want to make sure I'm doing this correct. Uh, it is now going to be the start of the upkeep phase. Okay, I'm glad I reread everything uh, over a few times. I, I need to re <laughs> redo my clarifications. All right, uh, to get things sorted out correctly.
let's just take a look at this because uh, I want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. When it is the Dakon victory point step, so not every victory point step, but the Dakon one, if the Dakon player has the first player token, he passes it to his opponent. So we did that in the first episode, or we should have, which means it is then going to be nighttime. If the Dakon player does not have the first player token, he takes it back. So we're only switching from day to night, night to day, during the Dakon victory point step, not the Dakon and the Uthic. So that clears that up. And yes, I forgot to counterattack with my uh, Citadel Guards. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, so I hope I'm getting things somewhat sorted out here. Now, the Citadel Guard has um, normally... They have three melee attack dice, but because the Razor Wings are flying units, we'll just take one more quick look at them just to verify. Because they're flying non-flying melee units, which the Citadel Guards are, roll one for your die during combat rolls against this unit. So, they are going to only roll two dice as a counterattack against the Razor Wings. So, let's go ahead and roll the two dice. And they get a ranged attack, which is not going to hit for a melee unit, and one retreat. So the Razor Wings must retreat. So the Razor Wings are going to back up one step. Now they're flying, so they can go on river spaces, they can go on hills, they can go on uh, towns. They go forest, they go wherever they want because they're in the air. They have to retreat. Now, uh, our Citadel Guards have Pursue 1. So instead of using advance, now they could advance or they can just stay where they are, this unit may move one hex and perform one additional attack. And I don't really know if I want, do they want to do that? They're still only going to get two dice uh, if they do, oh, they can't, sorry, they're counterattacking. You cannot pursue on a counterattack. Sorry, <laughs> trying to get all these rules straight in my head. Uh, it's really not that complicated. I'm making it sound horrible. Razor Wings attacked them. They counterattacked. You cannot use Pursue and Advance on a counterattack. So they just counterattacked the Razor Wings, drove them back. Everything is good. It's still nighttime uh, because now, now, after the counterattack and some clarifications of rules, it is the upkeep phase, but it is the Uthic upkeep phase. They have the first player token. It's still nighttime. So it's not going to change today. It is still the night time. Uh, and that is what it is. Okay, so now um, it is the draw step. So the Uthic player is going to draw one command card, which we're not going to see what it is, from the command deck. Okay, that's okay. Now he gets an option on the lore step. He can either draw two lore tokens, get a lore token and a lore card, draw two lore cards, and um, pick one of them. He is opting to get two lore tokens. So, I don't know what that means. Or, yeah, well, I guess I do, because I'm playing them. They're going to take two lore tokens. Now they have two lore tokens, and the two lore cards they had at the start of the game. That will conclude the Uthic turn. Now remember, the Uthics are trying to stop the... Dakon from going this way and exiting the board. And I was hoping the Razor Rings were going to do something for the Uthic, but they failed pretty spectacularly and didn't even get a retreat or a hit or anything. Now it is still nighttime, uh, and so when we come back in our next episode, it will be the Dakon's turn, but it is nighttime, so all of these archer units that the Dakon have have to be adjacent to a target to hit them. So they're kind of a little bit useless uh, right now uh, for their next turn because it will be nighttime. Then it will turn into daytime uh, during the victory point step for the Dakon and that'll happen at the next episode. So I'm, I apologize for kind of getting things kind of mixed up here. I do believe everything's on track now uh, and so all is good, I hope. And I hope I haven't made any mistakes. I don't think I do. I generally forget to counterattack in this game. I don't know why. It's just one of those things. Um, I think what it. I think the problem is when you go to the quick reference sheet, it gives you a rundown of all the things you're supposed to do. It doesn't say anything about 
counterattacking in there. So I tend to just forget it. But I didn't forget it, so that's good. We caught it. And I did the, uh, did the day-night thing correctly as well. So that's good. All right, that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you do, I have lots of gameplay videos, cardboard and dice uh, games. I do complete playthroughs from beginning to end, uh, either of a scenario like we're doing here with Battle Lore, uh, or a complete game, you know, whichever it is, card or board game or dice game. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for giving me a thumbs up if you like my videos. Uh, and again, more to come. So uh, join me next time for the continuation of the Razor Wings expansion, neutral army unit expansion called A Shot in the Dark. The Dakon are trying to run for their lives. The Uthic are trying to take their lives. So join me next time for the continuation of Battle Lore 2nd Edition, A Shot in the Dark.